Thank you. Well, thank you for flying Almost Airlines. How may I help you today? Yes, here's my ticket. Oh, I see you're flying to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have any luggage to check? Uh, no, no. Oh, but I do have my carry-on. Okay, great. Are you okay? You seem a little nervous. Well, I have to admit it. This is my first flight. Oh, great. Can I ask you a question? Well, sure. How often do your planes crash? Only once. If you've ever joined us before, you know we don't have a studio to record in, so we go on location. And today we're at the Triangle Pharmacy here in Ravenna, Ohio. So we have the perfect prescription for your next two hours. Join us for our movie, The Thirteenth Guest. Ooh, nice segue there. Try. Now, The Thirteenth Guest is from 1932, and it stars Lyle Talbot and Ginger Rogers. Now, Ginger Rogers was only 21 when she was in this film, and you know, she started making films when she was only 18, and believe it or not, The 13th Guest was her 13th film. Ooh, coincidence? I think not. <laughs> hey, Dave, you did let them know that we were coming here today, right? So we don't have any trouble like last time. I don't know why you always accuse me of getting you into trouble. Well, I guess that's true. It's usually you that gets into more trouble than me. Well, see? I said usually. Hey, so what's the plan for today? Don't need a plan. I have a prescription to have filled out. Really? Yeah. Tell us like we belong here today. Almost. Wow. Hi. Hi. I'm Sue. I'm the second assistant, third grade pharmacist. Uh, third grade? Two more grades and you could graduate from elementary school. That's more than I can say about you, Slick. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. As long as you're sure. Well, now that we have that figured out, whatever that was, <laughs> why don't we just take a break, watch a sketch, and get to our movie, The Thirteenth Guest. I wonder what it costs to get a second grade pharmacist. Don't worry, Slick, you can't afford it. Can I help you? Yeah, we're just wondering, why don't you tell people there's arsenic in cigarette smoke? <clears throat> and why don't you all just focus on the positive? Cause positive's the way you ought to be. Why don't we all stop being so derogative to the big tobacco companies? We asked, is nicotine addictive? We told you that it's not. Okay, then maybe everyone just likes it a whole lot. So why destroy the research? Do you think that they're afraid? No, we're just getting ready for a ticker tape parade. Oh, let's try to focus on the positive. Sure, they be killed for a million folks a year. But let's stay focused on the positive. There's plenty of us still here. So what if we remove a lung? You shouldn't be depressed. It's really for the best. It's something off your chest. And yes, we know tobacco causes cancer of the bladder. It doesn't really matter. They make diapers for adults. His tumor was malignant. But look, he's not indignant. He knows. You gotta just stay focused on the positive. Every eight seconds a smoker dies. It's become routine. But let's stay Focus on the positive. They're not 
marketing to teens, they're reaching out to our youth. So let's all focus on the positive. We're positive, positive. That's the truth. Hey, sorry, uh, I had a phone call I had to take. Hey, do you remember old Charlie? Old Charlie, wasn't he the guy that had like four or five whiskeys a day for the last 17 years? That's the guy. Well, anyway, the phone call I got was telling me that old Charlie died. Oh, gee, that's too bad. It really is too bad. When they cremated the body, it took them two days to put the fire out. About the address, miss? Yes, this is the place. You'll be sure and wait for me now, won't you? Sure, I'll wait. Come on. Number, please. Oh, I'm at 122 Old Mill Road. This house hasn't been occupied for 13 years, and yet there's a telephone in it. Can you tell me who had it installed? I wouldn't have that information, madam. I could connect you with a night supervisor, but she'd have to wait until the business office opens in the morning. I'm sorry. Modern improvement. You might have cleaned the place up a bit.
Oh, yes, of course. Dad sat there. I sat next to him. Mr. Barksdale sat next to me. Aunt Lucille. Uncle John. Harold. Mother. Thor. Marjorie. Uncle Dick. Aunt Joan. Uncle Wayne. And Mr. Barksdale, is that you? Mr. Barksdale. Police station, Captain Ryan speaking. Yeah? The old Morgan place? He says he drove a youngster out there about uh, 30 minutes ago. Hold the driver, I'll be right over. Okay. Wake up, you dumb master muscle, and get going. Huh? Come on. Well, where are we going? Oh, the... Get her in a macro. All right. Give me Stuyvesant nine six hundred. You can go. Leave your address. We'll want you later. Yes. Sir. What? Well, keep ringing them. Hello. Hello, Phil. This is Ryan. Listen, we've got a swell case down here. I'm not interested. Give me Stuyvesant 9600. When you hear the tone of the gong, it will be exactly 12 o'clock and six split seconds. <laughs> This is a good murder. Listen, 13 years ago, a guy invited all his relatives to dinner. The sap deserved to die. Well, arrest the mother-in-law and don't bother me anymore. Oh, all right, but make it snappy. All right, there was 12 people there. The table was set for 13. The 13th guest never got there. That was 13 years ago. And now, tonight, we find a dame murdered, and she's sitting at the table in the 13th chair. 
Huh? I counted them. She was sitting in the 13th chair. You dumb flat foot. Who told you where to start counting? Well, go back and count the girl's chair first and let me know how you come out. And give my love to Aunt Sarah. <laughs> Bring that number again and keep ringing it. And then tell the night supervisor I want to know who had a couple of phones installed at 122 Old Mill Road if you have to get the whole Bell family out of bed. I'm uh, Winston, the private investigator. Captain Ryan sent for me. Yes, sir. Go right in. And uh, have fun, huh? <laughs> Call up headquarters and tell Clarence I'm sending those prints. Yes, sir. Oh, what's the number? Central Park. You dumb idiot, don't you even know that? Get out and look it up. The discipline will do you good. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Winston. We got a swell murder here. Good. And uh, the number you want is Central 5, 5,000. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. 5, 5,000. Central 5, 5,000. <laughs> well, you certainly took your time. I was busy. Yeah, sure. When you hear the gong, the time will be 12 o'clock and six split seconds. Uh, have a look at this, and then I'll introduce you to the lady. This house has been unoccupied for 13 years, yet the phone's installed and the electricity turned on. I'm tracing that. Those books are on the floor. That's all in here. Now, come on and have a look at the banquet. The kids sure hold still a little, right? Same old joke. If I had a day off, I'd take up a new one. You can have her now, Doc. Just a minute. I want Winston to have a look. Oh, will you take care of that, Jerry, please? Okay. Too bad. Pretty girl. You wouldn't notice that. Seen enough? Yeah. Okay, Doc. Say, how did you know about that dinner party 13 years ago? Oh, every man and his dog knows that story around here. <laughs> Morgan, senior, dropped dead just after they all sat down to the table. The old lady, she was young then, must have been a little bit cracked herself. She wouldn't allow a thing to be touched. Just closed up the house and moved out, and that's that. And all these guys have been waiting for the dinner ever since. <clears throat> Gives me the willies every time I think of it. Well, don't think, then. Uh, you know who the girl is? Sure. Daughter, Marie Morgan. Had her whole life's history in her handbag, but no address. The driver that brought her out here said he picked her up on the corner of 59th and Park. The apartment house? No, nope, on the corner. We've been checking up on the apartment houses around there now. How was she killed? Hmm. Wait till you hear. The doc hasn't said for sure yet, but it looks like she was electrocuted. Electrocuted? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought of that too. Not a wire on it. That was it. Electricity. Enough to kill her, but not to burn the body. I wonder where she got it. Say, that light in the living room... <laughs> I'll get it. Well, uh, 
what about that light in the living room? Tain't on. I tried this globe in every socket in the room and it don't work. Oh, maybe the globe's burned out. Never thought of that. <laughs> anyway, I don't think I'd go around trying light sockets if I were you. Why? Didn't it occur to you that a young lady was electrocuted here tonight and that she might have been trying light sockets? And welcome once again to the Cemetery Psychic Hotline. I'm your host, Kitty Spooky Cat, and I'm here to be your gateway between you and Summerland. I'm here with Hoover, who is my connection to the other side. He is the Psychic Owl. What's that, Hoover? I should take call? I think I should. Hello, and welcome to the Cemetery Psychic Hotline. What is your name, and how may I be of assistance? Yeah, my name's Harry the Eraser, and I want to know if you could really talk to the dead. I can speak to those on the other side through Hoover, my pet owl. An owl? Do you not? Just tell me whom you wish to contact. Yeah, well, I want to talk to Cementio Jimmy, that's whom. Let me concentrate and speak to Hoover. Yeah, Talk to me, Hoover. Talk to me, Hoover. <laughs> this is Hoover. nuts. Yes, we are in contact with Cement Shoe Jimmy. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, what does he say? He says to tie your shoelaces. Tie what? What are you talking about? My shoelaces are tied? Wait, what a phony. I wasn't finished. He says to tie your shoelaces together. Mr. Eraser? Mr. Eraser, are you still there? Yeah, Jimmy always used to tie people's shoelaces together. How did you know? Oh, damn it, I just spilled water all over my floor. He says for you to unplug your TV. Well, yeah, well, I better do it then. Wait. I wasn't finished. Unplug your TV, but be careful for the short that is in your TV cord. The mystery racer. The mystery racer. Well, it seems we were disconnected. We'll be right back after a short word from our sponsor. Good evening. I'm with the Godfather, Rat Extermination Service. Sometimes you got a dirty rat and you don't want to get your hands dirty. You know what I mean? That's when you call the Godfather, Rat Extermination Service. It doesn't matter to us whether the rat is six inches long or six feet tall. We'll take care of it. We'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Give us a call, the Godfather, Rat Extermination Service. We accept PayPal, credit card, money order, your firstborn, it doesn't matter. Call us. Oh, yeah, man. Have you guys ever heard of flypaper? What? Oh, <clears throat> that it looks like that's all the time we have for this week's program. Tune in next time when... Hoover and I take another call from the Cemetery Psychic Hotline. Well, I just wanted to stop by and see how my little nest egg is doing because, you know, none of us are getting any younger, Phil. 
Yeah, except for Christy Brinkley. Yeah, and Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo, he's a cartoon character. Hey, sometimes cartoon characters age. Didn't you ever see Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol? Good one, Dave. Anyway, you called me to stop on by and kind of check up on your investments. I came up uh, with two different retirement plans for you. Two of them? Great! Yeah. The first option I call the no way in heck option. Well, I am familiar with that one, but you do have another one. Yes. How well can you say, hi, welcome to Walmart? Hello, operator. See if you can trace that call and ring me back. Make it snappy. Yes, darling, there's been a murder. You can read all about it in the morning papers. She listened in on all the other calls. Why the devil didn't she listen in on that one? What was it? I don't know. I just heard the receiver going up after I answered. Hello, Captain Ryan speaking. Sound Hotel? Thank you, sister. Oh, Grump! Yes, sir. Beat it over to the Sound Hotel and see if you can trace that call. Get a list of all the guests and all the telephone calls after midnight. And don't muff it. No, sir. And don't go to sleep. Yes, sir. Oh, well, how am I going to get there? You can drive a car, can't you, sweetheart? Take mine and beat it. Yes, sir. Oh, if that guy's uncle don't die soon, I'll be a nervous wreck. Who's the uncle? Just the big boss in the city, that's all. Oh, so that's why he's on the force. You don't suppose because he got any brains? <laughs> hey, Cap, come here. Come here, will you? Oh. Come here, Cap. What's the matter now? The car, look at it. It ain't there. Well, I'll be a <laughs> son of a... What are you laughing at? Nothing. I just think it's funny. <laughs> I'm glad you invited me down. <laughs> yeah. Come in, boys. Yeah. Okay. Sit down. I'll see you in a few minutes. Do they identify the body? Yes, sir. Which one of you is the brother? I am. Friend of yours? Yes, and of my sister. All right, boys, I won't keep you long. Either of you know a man named Barksdale? Yes, we both do. He was my father's lawyer. Is he still handling the estate? Yes. Why? We'll ask the questions if you don't mind, son. Wasn't your father's will a little unusual? It was quite unusual. He provided for my mother, for Marie and me, and left the bulk of the estate to the 13th guest. Who was that? We don't know. The 13th guest never arrived. Screwy. Anything else about this guest? No. Except that we always supposed that he'd come forward or be named when we became of age. Well, when will that be? Well, why, do you suppose that might have had something to do with it? Marie was 21 yesterday. What? Yes. Boxdale called her the other day and told her to... Oh, I'm not interested in that. Well, I am. All right, be interested. Wait a minute, where are you going? Out. I'll see you later. Say, but... Uh, oh. I suppose you were at that dinner party your father gave? Yes. Where'd your sister sit that night? Why, I'm beside my father. She always sat there. Which side? One is right. Will you draw me a diagram of that table? Name the people in the seating arrangement, and uh, if any of them have died since, make a note of it. Have you kept in touch with the family? When we couldn't avoid it. <laughs> well, uh, put down their addresses and leave it with the captain here. Thanks. Do you remember how we sat that night? Yes, I, I think so. Were you there? Well, I, I was visiting there. Uh, we were just kids then, but it isn't easy to forget a thing like that dinner party. I suppose not. I've got a hunch I'll be thinking about it for some time myself. Let us hear about that phone call from Barksdale and I'll let you go. Well, there, there isn't much to it except that Barksdale called her a few days ago and 
gave her some instructions. Something she was supposed to do on her 21st birthday. And you don't remember what they were? I know. She wouldn't tell me. And we're supposed to find the answer. Does anybody know anything? What is the matter with the old man besides being nuts? Are you sure this dinner wasn't held in an insane asylum? What? Ryan, calm down. Take these boys to the next office and give them some paper and pencils. And send Carter in. Yes, sir. You boys better stick around. We might want you. That's too bad, son. You'll take care of yourself. And what do you mean? Hmm, nothing much. You mean they might go after me? They might. Well, I don't think I'd care if they did. Well, we would. It cost the department a lot of dough to investigate a murder. Well, in that case, I'll be careful. Well, thanks. You've been very considerate today. That's all right, son. Well, what do you think? I can't think. I'm numb. Why the devil does a man have to go through all that hocus-pocus just to leave a will? It burns me up. Well, stop burning. Carter will make happy. Yeah. Hey, Carter. Let's see what you got. Yes, sir. Here are the deposit slips of the telephones and lights, ordered by one John Barksdale. Barksdale? So that's where you got it, huh? Yeah, feel better now? I'll say. Wait till I lay my hands on this guy. Also a man answering to Barksdale's description, registered at the Sound Hotel last night about 9.30, under the name of Perry, and at 1.22 put in a call to Douglas and 968, then checked out of his hotel immediately after. Now, he hasn't been home since, and he hasn't shown up at his office yet, and his folks are beginning to worry. Well, now, isn't that too bad? Tell them they can see him on uh, Visitor's Day. Let's go. Oh, pardon me, sir. I managed to dig this up out of... The Daily Herald files, with Bartle Steel. Swell. Let's send that out at once. Okay. Put a couple of the boys on those two kids in there. They may be all right, and again, they may not. Yes, sir. Anything else for me, sir? No, but stick around. Okay. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Stand by for description of one John Boxdale. Wanted for questioning on the Morgan murder case. Last seen on Long Island, driving a package touring, license unknown. Description, 50 years, 6 feet, gray hair, eyes brown. That is all. Hello? Hello? I should ring the wrong. Hello? Ah! Ah!
chairs. You can call me all the names you wanted. I've run out of names to call you. I don't care. Mr. Wilson, if you'd have heard it, you'd well, uh, What did it sound like, Grump? Well, it sounded like Tarzan. Tarzan. And the devil and a couple of hyenas strode in. Well, uh, could you give me an idea of uh, what it sounded like? Well, yeah, it, it, it started kind of, it started kind of up, like, yeah! That ain't just it, you know, it, it's kind of like it. Well, uh, perhaps if you tried it again, Grump. Yeah, well, it's just, yeah! You <laughs> idiot. Don't you know when you're being ribbed? Shut up! Oh, I was only trying to... Shut up! Get out. Who put all them books there? So would I. Did you go to sleep today? I don't think so. You don't think so? Get out of my sight before I kill you. Yeah. Hey, Phil, come here. You come here. Where are you? In the dining room. Oh. That? Search the house upstairs and down. Yes, sir. Not that it'll do much good. Phil, what's the answer? It's got me worried plenty. Me too. But I'm beginning to be glad that I wasn't invited to that dinner party years ago. Yeah. Here's the diagram young Morgan drew today. Take a look at the seating arrangement. First, we find the girl's body in the chair that she sat in that night. And now this. Are you beginning to get the idea? Gee, yes. Ye gods, Phil. Are they going to line this table with stiffs? That's the way it looks, unless we do something. But, but that's crazy. It very nearly confirms one thing, though. The person doing it was at the table that night. Hi, and welcome back from our movie, The 13th Guest. And we're today at the Triangle Pharmacy in Ravenna, Ohio. Now, something very unique about this movie is the musical score or actually the lack of one. The only music there was was at the very beginning. And music usually plays a huge vital role in a movie, setting the mood, the tone, and they're doing all of that today through the script and the actors. Mm. Did you notice anything about the movie, Dave? Yeah, words. What? Words. What are you talking about? Well, you know, they've only been making sound movies for five years, and look at all the words they put in there. Well, you know, Dave, they were talking before they made talking movies. Really? Hey, is that right? What? Did they really talk before the silent movies? Well, of course they talked before silent movies. But you had to be careful because you could be drowned out by the organ. Mm -hmm. Say, how old do you think I am anyway? Well, I think he just told us. So what can I do for you? Hey, I, I have this prescription I need, Phil. Uh, this? Yeah. Uh, it says peanut butter juice, can of crushed peas, 
Ah, uh, loaf of boysenberry bread? I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's my shopping list. Ah. Uh. Remind me not to shop where you shop. Oh, hey, it's just part of my recipe for spaghetti. Ew, remind me not to eat at your house. Here, here's my prescription. You uh, want me to fill this prescription? Of course. Well, it's very, very old. Well, that's okay. I have a very, very old doctor. Well, I'll see if we still have some of this stuff laying around the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, while they try to fill Dave's prescription, why don't we take a break, watch a sketch, and go back to our movie, The 13th Guest. <laughs> Explore new worlds. Read. Visit literacy.gov and let the journey begin. Hi, I'm Maud Mother Goose, and with my little friend Porkchop here, we're going to review a modernized nursery rhyme. So children, sit back and listen. You ready, Porkchop? All right. To market, to market, to buy a fat pig. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. To market, to market, to buy a fat hog. Home again, home again, jiggity jog. What is this regime to carry around pigs? To shrink down the tushy and make biceps big? A hog exercise program? Now how can that rate when better workouts come from a Jane Fonda tape? Stairmasters, treadmills, and walking the dog are highly preferable to bench pressing a hog. The exercise program we most like with pork is when we're hoisting it up with a fork. <laughs> oh, well, sorry there, pork chop. But, well, children, please join us next time when we find out if the old lady that lived in the shoe, is she related to Octomom? Thank you, everyone. Ta-ta for now. Thank you, pork chop. Oh, look at you. You're all ready for some slop slop, aren't you? Oh, good little fella. A good little fella. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. you get out of the morgue? I haven't been in any morgue. Take your hands off me. Shh, be nice. I won't. Let me alone. Do you want me to spank you? Hold still. That's a good little girl. What's your name? Ree Morgan? Yes. What did you say? I asked this child here if she were Marie Morgan. I'm no child. Will you shut up? And she said yes. And she said yes. I don't know. Maybe it's something I ate and this is the nightmare. Where did you pick her up? I found her riding around in your car. In my... I was on my way to the police station. Yes, and baby, you're still on your way to the police station. Take her down and lock her up. I've got some things I want to ask her about. You can't arrest me. Oh, can't I? That's what they all say. Maybe it's all a mistake. 
And maybe you can explain everything. And I'll bet you won't say a word until you see your lawyer. Well, I won't. All right, baby. Come and see your lawyer. Self to a good look. Oh. Murdered? That's right. Do you know anything about it? No. No, of course not. What can this mean? That's what we're going to find out. Take our luck in the library till we get through here. Was she headed for police station? She was going in that direction. Call up city headquarters and report this. Call the coroner. Then stick around outside. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now... Why did you ask that girl if she was Marie Morgan? I think she is. What about the other dame? There are no twins. No, but the other girl had several small scars around her face. Didn't you notice them? Yes, but I didn't think anything about it. Well, I did. I thought she'd had her face lifted. Well, what a blasted idiot I've been. That's why you were so surprised when her brother told you she was 21. Certainly. No kid that age is going to have her face lifted. And you beat it back to the morgue to have another look. Right. And took a good plastic surgeon with me. She hadn't had her face lifted. She'd had it completely made over. Well, I'll be... Now, that commences to make sense. Barksdale made an appointment with the real Marie Morgan to meet him here. They planned to kill her and substitute the other girl, huh? Who planned to kill her? Huh? Barksdale made the appointment. Yes, but if Barksdale was in on it, which he may have been, uh, who killed the gentleman on your right? Little Bo Peep. I wouldn't do that if I were you. The police might not like it. I was only trying to call my brother. We'll call him later. You're going to take a ride with me. Where to? To my apartment. She'd be safer in jail. Don't worry, she won't get away. I didn't mean that. I said she'd be safer in jail. And you may go to the devil. Mr. Adams, Mr. Winston. Why, my dear child. Why, I'm almost afraid to touch you. What is the meaning of all this? Why, I'll have to send back that cutaway I ordered for your funeral. You wear those to weddings, not funerals. This is Uncle Adams, the worst old reprobate who ever lived. My dear, you're covering quite a lot of territory. How do you do, Mr. Winston? I'm delighted. How do you do? If you give him a drink, I think he may keep still. Uh, what'll it be, scotch and soda? Splendid, thanks. Easy on the soda. <laughs> If you want my opinion, it's Uncle Adams who's been committing all the murders. All the murders? Mr. Boxdale was murdered today in the old house. Boxdale? My word. Not that I ever liked the old devil, you understand, but... but murdered. Well, what's the meaning of it, Mr. Winston? You're investigating the case, I suppose? Unofficially. I'm a friend of Captain Ryan. Yes, yes, of course. I've heard of you. Well, have you any... Uh, clues, don't you call them? Any uh, ideas? No. But he has a laugh for you. Really? Well, let's have it. 
You're next. What? According to Mr. Winston's theory, you're next on the list. Unless, of course, you've been doing the murders yourself. Really, Marie, you've always had the most peculiar sense of humor. Must be some more of the family. I'm doing the resurrection act. And enjoying it thoroughly, if I know you. You certainly startled me. Did I? Mr. and Mrs. Thornton, Mr. Winston and Miss Thornton. How do you do? How do you do? If you would explain your reasons. Well, for but... heaven's sake, I thought you were dead. Disappointed? Well, why be a hypocrite? You know I've always hated your Marjorie. If you say that word again, I'll disown you. What a loss. Is this for private use only? I suppose you're Winston. At your service. I may take you up on that. Mm hmm? Mm hmm. If this is another one of your jokes, Marie, I must say it's in bad taste. I've been simply prostrated all day. I'll bet you have. Bridge always tires, Mother. Marjorie. May I answer it? Certainly. Let me. Certainly. Bud! Oh. Oh, Marie, it is you. Oh, my dear. They tried to kill me. Are you glad I'm alive? Am I glad? I think you are. But, but what does it mean, sis? They, they made us go down and look at that, that other girl. We thought it was you. Did you cry? Hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, honey, we, we both went home and got potted. <laughs> That's just as good. Come on in. Mr. Winston has the whole family here. He says one of them is the murderer. I'm giving odds on Uncle Adams. Uncle Adams? <laughs> He's too lazy to commit a murder. But tell me, darling, what happened to you? I'll tell you later. Well, here we are. Just one big, happy family. Oh, hello, Thor. Who was that blonde I saw you with the other night? There was no blonde, and you know it. Oh, well. Dear Marjorie, your soul must look like the inside of a vinegar bottle. By Jove, it's a good idea. I wish I'd thought of it myself. What's that? Killing off the family. It must be some poor soul that had the misfortune to dine with us when we were all together. I think you're right. Someone who dined with you 13 years ago. Really? Oh, you mean the night that John read that stupid will? And then died. Well, mercy, don't ogle me. I didn't kill him. No one killed him, as far as we know. Does anyone here know the present whereabouts of um, Wayne Seymour? The last time I saw him, I got an impression that he was going to spend the rest of his days at number nine, Yokohama. <laughs> I see you know your Yokohama, Mr. Winston. Uh, I've traveled a bit. With the exception of Wayne Seymour, you people were the only guests at that dinner who are still alive. Well, and we're dead from the neck up. Speak for yourself, John. I'll speak if you don't mind. Go ahead, but a few snappy jokes injected here and there would make a world of difference. You see, we're accustomed to public speaking. I'm afraid this isn't a joking matter. It looks as if someone is determined to kill every person who attended that dinner 13 years ago. They've already killed two people. Two? Two? two. Yes. A girl mistaken for Miss Morgan and John Barksdale. Mr. Ah, what? Barksdale? Barksdale murdered? Very much so. And in both cases, the bodies were found in the chairs occupied by that person at the dinner. And as uh, Captain Ryan so elegantly describes it, the murderer intends to line the table with stiffs. Oh, how vulgar. <laughs> well, thank goodness I was under the table most of the time. <laughs> yes, pinching me. Oh, I was a cute youngster, always full of fun. Someday I'll look at your baby pictures, but uh, just now we're discussing murder. Which automatically makes one think of the Marjorie. Well, speak for yourself, John. Shall we go on with this or just turn it into a family reunion? Well, why not have a blindfold test? Wouldn't matter which one you picked. We'd all cut each other's throats for a dime. Hmm. 
Why a dime? I'll cut yours for fun. Give me police headquarters. Detective Bureau, Captain Brown's office. Well, it isn't every day you get a chance to see a mastermind at work. Hello. Who's this speaking? Oh. Well, this is Winston. Uh, send the wagon to my apartment. And issue... Uh, um, four John Doe and three Jane Doe warrants. Material witnesses in the Morgan case. Right. I've got them here. <laughs> um, really, you're quite amusing, Mr. Winston. Thank you. You like the matron in the city jail, too. She's one of the Philadelphia Smiths. Perhaps by this time you're beginning to see that I mean business. Now then, do you want to stop trying to be clever or do you want to spend the night in jail? Well, Winnie, do the men have separate wards from the women? I think you settled it then, young lady. Night in jail may make you people see that murder isn't amusing. This is an outrage. So is murder. Why, you can't do this. Wait and see. I'll break you for this. The governor is a personal friend of mine and of mine. And I happen to know that he's a little funny when it comes to murder. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Don't be a lot of fools. He doesn't intend to send us. The police. Yes, yes, so I see. Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, sir. Have you the warrants? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, all signed and in order. All right. Take these people down and lock them up. Yes, sir. All right, step lively. I demand to see my lawyer. Miss Morgan saw her lawyer today, and I don't think she enjoyed it. Well, you'll be sorry for this. Good night, Winnie, dear. Winston. Uh, good night, my dear, and uh, sweet dreams. The Weirdness Really Bad Movie sadly presents The Weirdness Thought of the Week. To be sure of winning, invent your own game, and be sure to tell none of the other players the rules. I'm a dog. What's your excuse? Can anybody tell us why smoking isn't stupid? We have just seen rushes direct from Hollywood of pictures being released in the coming weeks. And we are proud to announce that this theater will soon bring you the greatest array of pictures ever to reach our screen. You will see the finest stars in exciting performances. You will thrill to the suspense, comedy, romance, and drama of world-famous stories. Here's a glimpse of a few of them coming to this theater soon. Left here alone. Don't be frightened, we won't hurt you. Let me out. I'm afraid that is quite impossible. I need you. You need me? Yes. Possible.
And now, it's showtime. down, dearie. We've got another corpse. <laughs> what? what? What, the family's all locked up? Yeah, sure. You're a smart guy. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't over yet. You coming down? Okay. Get me the police station. Hello. Give me the desk sergeant, the city jail. Yeah. Hello. This is Winston, private investigator on the Morgan case. I sent down seven of the upper crust for you. Will you send somebody in and see if they're all there? Yes, sir. Hey, Mike, take a look at the 400 and see if they're all there. Okay, sergeant. Commissioner. I won't stay in here another moment. <laughs> Say, what are you trying to do, rip me? Dear me, no. Say, if you guys don't dummy up, there's gonna be a murder. Well, that's what we're here for. Two murders. He did them. What? Hey, pipe down here. Yeah, officer, I demand it. Oh, go read your ticker. I want to know what Steele's doing. Sergeant. Okay. All there, Mr. Winston. Okay, thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, turn them all loose, but put a man on each one of them. Now, yeah, I'll be responsible. place at all. I've scoured the whole house. Now, the only answer is there must be a closet or a room somewhere that we don't know anything about. I don't want to know anything about it. All right, Bill. Make it snappy. Uh, cut it right there. What do you make of that, huh? I wonder.
steel. Great guns. Nothing rubber about that. Come on, let's get out of here. I've seen sights, but that one. Oh. Rather a neat way of doing it, though, huh? I don't think it's neat. It's fiendish as the devil. Do you realize that the murderer left that switch on not caring who got killed? And while he's asleep in the county jail, he commits another murder. But he wasn't here to turn off the switch and bring the body in here. I think that cinches it. But which one? Well, you saw them. Which is the most likely? Well, the odds are about even. There's a cousin Marjorie who'd commit murder just for the fun of it. And her mother'd kill anything that stood in her way. But I think it stands between the two uncles. Adams is as smooth an old devil as I've ever seen. But Thornton's deep. You know, the big businessman who'd stop at nothing. What about the brother and his boyfriend? Well, I think they're all right. Jensen's in love with the girl, and her brother seems genuinely fond of her. Well, what's the girl's story? Well, she says someone shot at her in the dark. She ran upstairs and hid. And by the way, she heard that same cry that Grump heard. And according to her, it wasn't particularly pleasant. Just the same, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> and what else did she do besides steal my car? Well, she said she came back down, was about to beat it out the front door when she heard a car and motorcycle drive up. Said by that time, she didn't know where to turn. And when she came in here and saw her double sitting cold and stiff at the table, she did go nuts. Got scared of the police as well as the rest. Hid in the cellar and then stole the car. She hid out all the next day thought better of it and was on her way to the station when they picked her up. Hmm, it's logical. Barksdale asked her out here? Yes. And what they were all after, I think, was a slip of paper that she got that day at the bank, which doesn't make much sense, of course, unless it's a safe combination. What was it? Thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> I'd like to get old man Morgan alone for about ten minutes. I'd teach the old buzzard how to write a will. <laughs> well, we get the family down here and try and sweat it out of them? Or should we put a close watch on them and see who comes down here? Well, I'm in favor of the last. Now, our friend may get curious and come down to see if he's had another killing. Then we keep this last one quiet, huh? That's right. I've got a hunch it's the missing uncle. But I want to call Miss Morgan. Call the coroner, too, will you? I'm kind of ashamed to because I've bothered him so much lately. Thank you. Well, if this is the kind of service I'm going to get, I'm going to get killed every day. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Mr. Blink's apartment. Uh, how'd you like our city jail? Listen, child. I want you to destroy that strip of paper at once. And don't tell anyone what was written on it. Not even your brother. But... But... No one's accusing your brother. Say, listen, don't you get too smart. You know, there's a distinct prejudice in the police department against little girls who go around stealing police cars. Oh, you're not. Well, 21's a mere drop in the bucket. Say, will you shut up and let me talk? Now listen, don't tell anyone those numbers. And if anyone tries to get them out of you, let me know immediately. Will you do that? Like a sweet little girl? That was the great sleuth, Winston. Yeah. What did he want? He told me not to tell anybody the numbers on that slip of paper. What numbers? 13, 13, 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Trust a woman. <laughs> oh, well, for goodness sake, don't tell him I told you. <laughs> All right, we won't. <laughs>
shame on you looking at those things. Huh? Why don't you have luncheon with me? It'll be more comfortable than standing out here. How'd you know I was following you? Have you ever been to the zoo? Sure. Did you see the elephants? Yeah. Well, that's how I know. Huh? I'm afraid you're not very bright. But you may come in handy. I'm about to go calling. Would you like to come along? I gotta go wherever you go. Is that a theme song? Or just your quaint way of saying things? Oh, well, I... You'd better ride with me. You know, I'm getting a pain in the neck from looking back at you. Come on. Of course, just looking at you may give me a pain in the neck. Huh. Get in. Well, okay. Stay there until you relieve. That was Bentley, detailed to watch Adams. He says Adams hasn't left the house all day. But some dame just came up in a limousine with Grump. Grump? He's tailing the Thornton girl. Tailing her? He's riding in the limousine with her. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd give a hundred bucks to see that. <laughs> Come in. <clears throat> There's a Dr. Sherwood outside. Says he has some information on the Morgan case. Dr. Sherwood? Yes, sir. Send him in. I hope he's our man. Uh -huh. Hi, Doctor. Captain Brown? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I hope you're a plastic surgeon. I see you're ahead of me. I am, as a matter of fact. And I operated on the young lady who was killed. I only saw your notice in the paper this morning. Yeah, well, we didn't know until last night that the wrong girl had been killed. Well, when did you operate on her? Several months ago. The three, as a matter of fact. She and her brother came to... What? Court. Well, she said he was her brother. What name did they give? Morgan. Morgan? Uh, may I take Dr. Sherwood over to Miss Morgan's apartment? Okay. You could identify the brother, couldn't you? Oh, certainly. He came to me twice. Fine. Let's go. Well, goodbye, Captain Brown. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you. Thank you. Oh, hello. Tell me, Doctor. That's your man? No. Say, why aren't you down at the old house? Well, I'm rather tired of being there so much. Have you a picture of your friend Jensen around? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. But look here, Mr. Winston. Marie's gone down to the old house to meet you. What? Well, didn't you call her? Well, no. You didn't call her? No, I tell you. What's it all about? I just got in. She left this. Was it? Oh, um. oh uh, uh, get a picture of Jensen and show it to the doctor, will you please? Hello, operator. Get me Douglas in 968. Hurry it. That's the one. Mm. Hurry with that call. Hi, and welcome back. We're just about ready to finish up our film, The 13th Guest. Now, in this film, with Ginger Rogers, was Lyle Talbot. He had quite the career. He had 350 credits for movie and television. He was probably best known for his role in the TV show, uh, it was called Ozzy and The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. He played Ozzy Nelson's best friend, Joe Randolph, and he played that part 45 times. Wow. He was also the first person to play Commissioner Gordon in the movies and the first person to play Lex Luthor in a Superman serial. Mm. He was also on Broadway, did a lot of stage work, and in the 1960s, he's the only actor that was cast for both parts of Felix Unger and Oscar Madison. And that was in Neil Simon's The Odd Couple. Mm. So, what can you tell me about Ginger Rogers? Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, say something else, Dave. Uh, all right. Well, you know, in 1944, she received an Oscar for the Best Actress. Okay. In 1953, she received a Golden Gold Globe nomination. She also had a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And in 1941, along with Fred Astaire, she received the Golden Apple Award. Golden Apple Award? What's that? Well, that was an award they kind of had Hollywood insiders for those who were least cooperative in the films. Now, in 1967, it was kind of changed to, you know, those actors that really presented the worst image of Hollywood. Yeah. And then in 1978, it was changed to those who most believe their own publicity. Wow. Have any other actors received this? Oh, yeah, quite a few. Uh, there was Drew Barrymore and John Travolta and even Sylvester Stallone. Wow. Hey, there you are. I've been looking all over the store for you. Oh, is there a problem with the prescription? Oh, no, 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 no. Just a prescription decision. You see, your insurance company allows for either the original name brand or the generic. It's your choice. Oh, so uh, what's the difference? Well, we here at Triangle Pharmacy really try hard to be competitive with our pricing. So for the original, it would be $7.17. Oh, that's not too bad. No, good. Uh, how much would the generic be? Well, with the generic, we pay you 12 cents. Ooh. But, but, with the original, you will get a free car wash. Well, you know what? I can use a car wash. Let's go with the original. Oh, that's such a good choice. <laughs> and don't worry about anything. All right, Barry, take the power wash to slot 17. Maybe I better rethink that. Wow. <laughs> well, we had wait and have Dave's paint power washed off his car. Why don't we go and finish up our movie, The 13th Guest? <laughs> Hey guys, this is my teenage friend Fred. Rad! <laughs> hey pal, you want to pay attention to the road? Relax man, I got it. Look my man, if your bad driving gets me killed, you better hope you die too or I will haunt you silly. And I'm not just going to float over your bed like woo. I'm going to be making a more annoying noise like ah! And instead of wearing those long white robes, I think I'll wear something more warm fitting and upsetting. The other ghost will look and be like, wow, we've never seen that before. James? James, come on out from behind the couch. I can't. Why can't you? Because someone followed me here. James, I assure you, no one followed you here. How do you know? This is a secured building. Nobody can have followed you here. Security would know about it. You're safe here. I'm fine right here, thank you. James, please come on out. No one is out to get you. Nobody is out to get you. At least I'm prepared. You shouldn't be the one who should be ready. Me? Why should I be ready? Just because you're not paranoid doesn't mean that they're not out to get you. Listen, child, don't get in a panic, but get out of the house as quick as you can. Is there an officer guarding it? Yes. He let me in when I told him you... Mr. Winston, didn't you call me? Now, now, don't get in a panic. Just get the officer to drive you to the Douglasson police station and wait for me there. Now, beat it. Uh, all right.
Where's Miss Morgan? Hasn't she been here? No. No one's been here. You come with me. I may need you. No, wait. Stay here. Tell Ryan to beat it over to the Morgan house as soon as he gets here. Yes, sir. Isn't she there? No. my sister. Here, cut it out. Come on, get up. Go let him in. Now then, what have you done with Miss Morgan? Come on now, make it snappy. Miss Morgan? I don't know. Where is she? What's this? Ah, uh, just a swell species of skunk. Now come on, tell me, what have you done with her? I tell you, I... Did you call her and tell her to meet me here? No, I swear I didn't. We know all about Sherwood and the other girls, so you may as well tell us the rest. Who was in on this with you? Barksdale. So you killed her and then Barksdale so you wouldn't have to split, huh? No, I don't know who killed him. I swear it. Pick up that phone. No, no! Why not? Because that's the way Leela got it. You were there that night. Did you kill her? No, I saw her after... After shooting at Miss Morgan? No, no, I didn't. Uh, no, I didn't. you're a liar. Go on, take him down and lock him up. Come on. But, Phil... I tell you, Ryan, it doesn't make good sense. Why go to all the trouble to impersonate someone and then kill the impersonator? Jensen tried to kill Miss Morgan, but somebody else killed the girl thinking it was Miss Morgan. Jensen knew the difference. There have been two different factions working in this against each other. Why not? But where's... Exactly. Uh, get an axe. Break that wall in. All right. And son, you'd better go on back to the station. Why? Because I don't think your sister's going to be alive when we find her. I don't know. Help me. No. You know what they are. Help me. Help me. I know.
It's a swell joke. Come on, come on, get out of here. Come on. Got a patent on that little electrical device of yours, Adams? No, I'm sorry to say. I haven't. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. The state's got something that works along the same lines. And we're going to give you an exclusive demonstration. Take him out. Come on, move. Will they let you into that safety deposit box? Sure. What did you find? Only a million dollars of securities for her. A million? How disgusting. I hope it isn't U.S. Steel. Don't worry, it isn't. I left the securities there, of course, but this letter was on top and I thought you'd want it. Thank you. To Marie, the 13th guest. Can you imagine that? I was it all the time. <laughs> I... The poor lamb. Read it. Aloud? Why, yes. My dear child, I am making a rather melodramatic attempt to protect your fortune. But if I am right about the other members of the family, it is almost certain to reveal them to you in their true light, so that you will not make the same mistake I made when I married into it. Bless you, my dear, and may they have killed each other off by the time you receive this. Your father. It's sad, but it's also darn good advice. What? Uh, not to marry into a screwy family. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> oh yeah. Tell me where you've been. Well, first I went Told me to tailor. Hello. Hello, Phil. This is Ryan. Listen, I've got another swell. I'm not interested. When you hear the tone of the gong, it will be exactly 12 o'clock and six split seconds. <laughs> uh -oh. Hello? Ring Stuyvesant 9600 and keep ringing it. And when you've done that, well, well, ring it some more.
And now, intermission. Refreshment time. Watching Super Flick and eating all this great food. This flick is making me hungry. It makes me want to flick my bick. We should have gone to the drive-in where we could eat and flick to our heart's content. Well, what are we waiting for? Well, come on then. I'm going to have a pizza and popcorn and ice cream. And I'm going to have a burger with fries and a soft drink. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> yum. <laughs> it was a great idea. with the show. Oh no. Pain. Oh, is that my heart? My heart. My heart? No. It'll pass. 911. Could call 911. No. Ambulance to the sirens. Neighbors rushing over. Embarrassing. Too embarrassing. Maybe I'll feel better later. Oh. Some people would rather die than call an ambulance. So that's exactly what they do. just finished today's film, the 1932 film, The 13th Guest. Hope you enjoyed it. And Dave, you picked another good film. Missed it by that much. <laughs> We'd like to thank Triangle Pharmacy for allowing us to come in here today and host our movie. Now, you know, Julio, it's been almost two hours and I don't have my prescription yet. Well, they do that on purpose, so you walk around and buy all kinds of things you didn't ne know you needed to have. Hmm. Little did they know that I have a will of steel. In an empty wallet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, here's your prescription. Hey, thanks. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you uh, didn't buy anything? Fooled you. I have a will of steel. Uh, He's broke. Uh, well, you folks have a nice day anyway. <laughs> hey, Dave, you never did tell me what your prescription was for. Well, it's a 